Welcome back to Hands-On with Reinforcement Learning. This section is called Lights, Camera, Action, Building Blocks with Reinforcement Learning. In this section, we're going to take a look at three things. So the first thing we're going to look at is exploring the possible actions of your carts pole robots in OpenAI Gym. As you may recall, actions are sort of like a pipeline or channel, if you will, for which the agent makes changes to the environment. So the environment always gives a set of possible actions uh, to the agent. And so the first thing we're going to talk about in the first video, this, this video, is how you can actually explore what possible actions are there with the OpenAI Gym API. In the second video, what we're going to look at is understanding the environment of Cartspo in OpenAI Gym. In the last video, what we're going to do in this section is to use some very simple strategies to code up our first solution to Cartspo v0. The idea there is we're not going to use something very complicated, no new networks, we're not going to use any machine learning, but simply by using very traditional search methods, we're going to demonstrate what it means to teach your agents a policy so they can navigate the environment. So let's start the first video of this section, exploring the possible actions of your Carts Pro robots in OpenAI Gym. In this video, we're going to take a look at demonstrating how to list out actions in the OpenAI Gym API and comparing different actions between environments and then visualizing the actions on screen. So it's a lot more concrete rather than just graphs on screen. Now that we went through how you can generate the render loop for the OpenAI gym environments. I want to spend a little bit of time really digging into how the OpenAI gym environment works. So recall that we were having a loop that just very naively sampled different actions from the environment and did any step possible and that you know admittedly is a, a bit unrefined so now what what we really want to do is to really understand how we can systematically get the environments and the agents to interact together in a way that we can control and predict what's going to happen so the first thing for us to do is to go to gym.openai.com slash docs and this is a very very simple documentation on the OpenAI gym environment. The only thing we can scroll down to the running and environment section and actually what we see here is exactly what we've implemented in the last section. And so the next step for us to have a more informed uh, training loop is that Keep in mind here, where we had environment.step, actually, instead of sampling randomly from the action space, we can put in different integers to indicate different actions that we take. And then the environment actually gives us um, four numbers back. And the four numbers represent four different things that the environment wants to tell us. So number one, the first number is the observation object. And the observation object really just means a vector of numbers that represents the state after the agent has performed an action on it. So in card pose environments, what that means is they'll give you four numbers that describe where the pole is, where the cart is, and a bit of the rotation of the pole for you to feed in back into the agents to understand what's the next, best next step. And then a the second number that the step function gives us is the reward number. So the reward is the amount of reward that the previous action generated. So while this number is a little bit arbitrary, the goal is always to increase your total re reward, right? So in the cards pro environment, you would need to, the, the rewards represents the number of steps your pro has remained on the card. Uh, in, in a mounted car, the only reward is when you get to the flag. Um, in a very classic example of playing Atari games, 
the reward is the score shown on the screen. The third variable that comes back from the step function is the done boolean. So what this means is whether the environment has ended. So if you think about tasks or I guess experiences in real life where they terminate at a, at a consistent point in time and that's a very convoluted way of saying that kind of there's like a self uh, containing unit of a thing. So, for example, in a, in blackjack, you can hit blackjack, or you, you know, you, you can lose the dealer after all the cards are on the table. In chess, somebody wins eventually, um, and and we can contrast the, contrast this to experiences where there isn't a defined and consistent ending, uh, like drawing. If you if you draw something on paper, there there's no defined um, ending point. There's a subjective points of, oh, you know, we're finished painting, but there's no defined ending points. So whether an experience has an ending point in reinforcement learning literature is called uh, whether the task is episodic. So, you know, whether an episode has a start and an end. So this Boolean um, here done indicates whether the episode has ended. So here you can see that, you know, it says most, if not all, tasks are divided into well-defined episodes. Much like card po, right? You know, you either survive 200 steps, which is the the, the card pose equivalent of, oh, you know, where we're succeeded in a card po task, or the stick falls off the car, and at this stage, at this stage, you have to restart. So the done boolean has a very defined meaning in in card po. And then the last variable that comes back from the step function is the info dictionary. So now, like, this doesn't really feature in this video. It gives you some information sometimes, but really not a big focus. So there you have it. If we step, meaning if the agent supplies the action to the environment, and the ac environment tells the agent back what that action has done to the environment, it actually comes back with four different variables so that you can use it to... to to, to tune the action for the next step. And this is all very abstract, so let's, let's put this in action. So here I have on screen the Windows uh, PowerShell again, uh, I have Python open. So let's go ahead and import Jim. And then we can start new Carpo environment. And then, as we said before, but reminding you here, uh, every time you start a new environment, the first thing to ever do is to reset the environment. After you reset, you notice that there is this array of four numbers coming up, and this is actually the first observation that we'll ever get. Um, what it, this means is you've been reset to the environment, and you have, as such, obtained the first observation, um, or like kind of how the world start, right? So you have four different numbers here representing four different properties between the cart and the po. And and let's see what step comes back. So the first thing to understand is how we can see what are the permissible actions given the, the environment. So as you may recall from the last video, uh, the way to do this is to type in the action space. And it will give you this return saying discrete two. And what the, this is OpenAI Jim's way of saying there are two discrete different uh, actions you can take. And, and generally, uh, this means that uh, the first action that you can take would be uh, indexed to zero. Uh, and the second action would be indexed at one. Um, and then so for us to do either action, doesn't really matter which one, we can then say m.step. So in our last video, after m.step, what we did was just sample a random action in the action space. But here we're going to do something more deliberate. So let's say we do action zero, the first action in the action space. You can, and as an exercise, you can try visualizing this. And you realize that zero represents going left with the cart, and one represents going right with the cart. So let's see what step zero gives us. So as we said before, it actually gives us four different variables. So number one is the array of what the, what the environment looks like after we've moved our, moved our cart to the, to the left. And as you can see, this mirrors our first state, the, the four numbers in our first state, 
And some numbers have moved quite significantly uh, for these two numbers, and some numbers have moved just a bit. The second thing is um, we would receive the reward of one, meaning that we've survived one more episode. And the done Boolean is false, meaning that our poll is still on the cart, and there's, um, there's nothing to do but to try another action, right? So you can always continue on and on, and we can see what happened. And you can see here, actually, the episode terminated on this step here because we have simply blindly moved to the left and the Poe has fall down, fallen from the cart. And so what this means is that you can also see that the reward is zero, unlike one, because we, we, we didn't survive this episode, and the episode itself have, has ended. So generally, what you would do is to write a loop that detects whether the episode is done and then completely restarts, i.e., calls m.reset to, to sample a different episode. Now that we've got an understanding of how we can use the OpenAI Gym APIs to explore different actions of the agents or the possible actions of the agents with regards to interacting with the environment, uh, 